PC, I got excited today. What do I do when I get excited about music? Yeah, have to make a video. Here's what got me excited. I know it's not going to get you guys excited, but I'm going to try to sell you on it. Maria Moldar, Sweet and Slow, 1983. Uh, I'm going to show you also this record by Maria Moldar. And we're going to have a needle drop off of this record. Uh, my first shot to see if I can get a strike against me. But I played this record, had it sitting out here for a while. Bought this at the antique mall for $3. I figured I got 10 of her CDs. So I figured I probably have it on CD. Didn't even know. Uh, I had it sitting over here uh, as a record I wanted to play. Uh, and today I decided was in the mood to listen to this record. I put it on. Holy cow. Uh, this is one of her best records, and uh, I know she doesn't uh, get a lot of love in the VC, but I want to talk about this a little bit. This is kind of like two records in one, okay, and one of the things that uh, made me think about when I was playing this, good musicians like to play with other good musicians. She's a good singer. She's an excellent singer. So I put this record on and a tune that uh, I heard someplace else the first time and wasn't familiar with it, Cooking Breakfast for the One I Love. I put this record on, I didn't even look at it, that was the first tune, I couldn't believe it. So then I started getting interested and I got the album cover out and I looked at it, well guess who's on piano, Mike Rebenak, Dr. John, uh, got a guitar, bass and drums. Uh, on a bunch of the tracks here and these guys are all really good so I said it's kinda of like two records it was recorded in New York 19 <clears throat> the end of 1982 issued in 1983 uh, the first side is a little more old-fashioned bluesy uh, of course Dr. John on piano you would expect that uh, Adam and Eve had the blues, blues for Hoagie, there's going to be the devil to pay, sweet and slow, and brother seek and ye shall find. Well, side two, just as good as side one, all tunes good, all performances outstanding. It's a little bit more, I don't want to say modern jazzy, but you guys that like modern jazz, uh, will enjoy this and on piano on side two is Kenny Barra never heard of him didn't know who he was So of course I went and checked him out a little bit. Well, he's more of a modern jazz pianist He was a pretty young guy back when this was made. He's still going strong. In fact He's performing on jazz at Lincoln Center in December of this year with his jazz trio uh, so, uh, music just as good, but a little different in uh, the arrangements and the kind of sound. And I think there's something on here that everybody would like. Six tunes on side A, side B, only four tunes. A little more modern jazzy. The boys get into it a little bit more. Oh, Papa, Lover Man, Oh, Where Can You Be? Gee, Baby, Ain't I Good to You? And Prelude to a Kiss, Duke Ellington tune. So we've got a lot of variety on here. I paid $3 for this. Uh, the jackets VG and uh, the records VG++. And wouldn't be surprised if you can't find these in the dollar bin. This is really good musically. It's really good sounding. You want to get a good copy of this. You want to enjoy it. Well, when it came out in 1973... I don't know if this was her, this wasn't her first record, she did other stuff, but this was her first big record. Her first husband, Jeff Muldar, they did uh, some jug band music records and so forth. Uh, this had her only big hit. I didn't look up to see how it came out, but it's certainly a top 100, maybe a top 10. 
Midnight at the Oasis, and that's one of those things where uh, a big hit maybe doesn't do you much good because people think the rest of the stuff you do is going to be like that, and that's not what she does. She does a different kind of music. I think she does the music she likes. She doesn't do the music that uh, somebody is saying, well, this is going to be a big hit and they'll make you uh, famous and uh, put you on MTV or whatever. Uh, a nice variety. In fact, I think Midnight at the Oasis, kind of a completely different tune than all of the rest of the tunes on this album. I'm going to have a needle drop right now with one of the tunes. I'm going to play the whole tune. Uh, if uh, this doesn't get yanked, you'll get to see this. Uh, my own record store has two or three copies of this in the dollar bin. I know you can pick this up for a dollar, but pick up a, a decent copy. I didn't look at the records in those. Uh, you want to get a good copy of it. One of the things I noticed, all of the ones in the dollar bin, the jackets were a little bit different. So, uh, in fact, there were two or three variations there. So this thing's, because it had that one big hit, it had been repressed a number of times over the years. Uh, this is the first edition that I bought when it come out. So uh, listen to what's next. And uh, hope you enjoy my first uh, needle, needle drop or presentation of a complete tune. Seducing and deceiving. 